Hello, and welcome to The Strange Take. Well, it's early in the morning, the sun's just risen, and I had some thoughts. So, you know, that's what we do. We share them, and then, of course, they might sound a little strange, but that's what the show's all about. <laughs> you know, one of the things I'd like to discuss is uh, beating yourself up, you know? How many people, how many people out there beat themselves up? You know, it doesn't mean like you're you're standing there and you're you know punching yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Or you know you're uh, you know jumping off something high and landing on the ground, and having severe injuries. You know, it's kind of nuts. So it kind of strange. Beating yourself up is like telling yourself negative stuff about yourself. And, uh, oh, some of us, we only do that here and there, you know, when it's appropriate socially, but some people do it all the time. You know, I see lots of people beat themselves up and I've been told, Hey, cheeky guy, you beat yourself up too much. Right. But what is the reason why we beat ourselves up and The only thing that can kind of, you know, come to my mind is, uh, you know, because you care, right? You care about what you're beating yourself up about. might have been you didn't do a good job at work, but you are, but you just don't feel like you are. Or, you know, you, uh, some of you, the neighbor you know, put a new garage up or bought a new camper or a new vehicle and you're just not in a position to do it and you really like what they bought. So, yeah, you could call that envy. But beating yourself up, maybe envy is a cause of that too. Or, you know, jealousy or passion. There's a good word. That that word is, uh, you know, a good, strong, strong word, right? It's like, hmm. Oh, I'm passionate. You know, they ask you at work, like, you know, hey, you're doing a good job. You're like, what makes you do a good job? It's like, well, because I care. Or because I'm passionate. Or maybe it's because I'm so pissed off at everybody I work with because I got to work so much harder. Hmm. Right? I bet you there's a million plus people thinking about that. <laughs> Pretty cool. So, just recently, the podcast here has been picked up by a big app called Deezer. So, uh, check it out in the App Store. Deezer, 100 million plus downloads. I was kind of surprised. I was like, wow, maybe somebody will actually listen to my show. (laughs) Maybe not. (laughs) Right? Anyways. So, beating yourself up doesn't really do anything for a person except stress you out, make you tired, make you grumpy, take away your, you know, your biased thought process and replaces it with, and I know, I know it's a shame, you cheeky guy, you're not using the, the word bias properly, right? But I am, I've listened to some really good seminars, but anyways, back to what we're talking about, you know, beating yourself up, beating yourself up over, you know, all kinds of things. Didn't get the dishes done. Oh, I didn't get the dishes done. Fuck, I really let the family down. There you are in the morning. Oh, I didn't do laundry. I have no undies left. <laughs> That'd be pretty bad, especially for a female experiencing her menstrual cycle. Oh, 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 no clean undies. Oh, oh, oh. Beating yourself up, right? You make the kid a lunch and you didn't realize they forgot to put the mayo on the sandwich, right? Well, they come home and they're like, Mom, Dad, you know, you didn't put mayonnaise on my sandwich and it didn't taste very good. Oh, I better start beating myself up. You know, how about them single folks out there, right? Dating in COVID dating times. You might have waited like six months just to talk to this chick in person or this guy or this whoever they may be in person. And, and all of a sudden, you know, the words came out wrong. And all of a sudden, 
you know, you're in this thought process where you have to communicate in person instead of typing on a keyboard or, you know, talking through a cell phone screen or whatever it might be, Skyping or all the other platforms that there are to, to do that. But then, you know, here you are, your big moment, and you screw it up, right? Time. What are you going to do? Well, they say the strong and the brave just walk away and try another day. Hmm. Yeah. Right? Sounds good. I could live with that. Or you could, uh, you know, get really bummed out and put yourself down. You know, my legs are too thick or my legs are too skinny or my hands are too big or my eyeball bulges or I got a mole or I got a, a zit or loss of hair or too much hair. <laughs> Just never nothing is, is right, right? It's so easy to, to pick yourself apart. It really is. But I think if you, Take a little time and just remind yourself that when shit goes south, you know, and it always does, right? Always going south. The geese usually fly south when the winter comes, right? So the shit's coming. I mean, winter's beautiful, but it's cold. It's wet. And it can be dirty. But, you know, that being said, when shit goes south, how do you change from beating yourself up? Well... Hmm. First of all, have a cigar. <laughs> Second of all, smoke a doob or have a drink. Right? But ultimately, those are just suggestions. We all find the best way to deal deal with our stress. Some people they play the video game, or they, you know, go for a run, or they pump some weights, or they, you know, drink a, a weird tea. You know, there's weird tea drinkers out there, right? Well, I don't want to say strange tea drinkers, just weird tea drinkers. Tea's great, but some of these people drink some of this fucked up fucking tea nowadays, i am tell you. But, hey, I got to be careful. I once tried tea from Japan made with rose petals and stuff, and fuck, it was great. Got another fucking couple centimeters on the boner and, and uh, maybe another shot glass worth of goo. But, I mean, hey... It worked. It was good. I didn't even expect those results. I tried the tea a second time, didn't do that. So maybe it was a mental state. Maybe. You never know. But just keep in mind, you know, we don't want to spend the whole show just talking about depressing stuff, of course. So don't beat yourself up. It's easy to say. Hard to not do, right? Well, let's move on. I'll find something else fun to talk about besides things like that, you know. Got to hit a couple topics. You know, in the news, a couple scary things coming up. Hmm. The tides, the currents of the ocean are fluctuating. It's like a bad episode of Star Star Trek. The, the dilithium chamber is dematerializing. It's destabilizing. There's the word. I'm like a destabilizing. Yes, destabilizing in the ocean currents. Hmm. What will that mean? Right? Does that mean that some of the Arctic's going to melt? They say it'll bury half the United States and underwater. So where's everybody going to go, right? They're going to be like water world down there floating around boats. And, or are they going to come to Canada and say, fuck you, stupid little Canadians. We're coming for you. We're going to take your land. <laughs> How about uh, Apophis? The giant city-sized asteroid is supposed to fly between the moon and Earth. And uh, you're supposed to be able to see it with your naked eye in California, if you can see through the smog. So if they get to see it through the smog in fucking California, I should be able to fucking see it up here in beautiful Canada and our half ass clean skies we got up here. Right? I should be able to see that big rock flying by. I wonder if that has anything to do with that. You know, they're talking about the, the poles... A shift in the magnetic field and, uh, you know, North Pole will be like in Minnesota, I think it is, or wherever they, Milwaukee or something. <laughs> Anyways, you can fact check me on that one. But I have heard it by multiple sources. But, uh, you know, some scary stuff, what's going to happen to to our world? You know, if uh, what if there's some big chunks, like in the movie Greenland, you know, it's like this big asteroid's going by, but it's got this little tail of 
asteroids behind it. And they're like, oh, it's just water. It'll evaporate in the atmosphere. And then, boom, hits the planet, wipes out Florida, I think, right off the bat. Gone. So there's something to think about, right? You know, could be a quick one for you. Be all, you know, beating yourself up. And then you watch this big chunk of rock fly out of the sky. And all of a sudden you're twirling around inside your vehicle, burning at extreme heats. And then you're gone. And... You know, and either you're going to heaven if you believe in that, or you're going nowhere if you believe in that, or, you know, go hang out with Harry Krishna or something, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He might be cool. Might have something cool to say. He might be old-fashioned too, right? Smell sweaty with hairy pits and hairy ass. I don't know. Call him Harry for something. Well, anyways, you know, we could all end up like in that movie Captain Fantastic, right? We're all living out in the bush, and kids are super educated all of a sudden, and... You know, killing deer and climbing mountains and running more than soldiers in Korea or China do. Right? Ooh, that's a workout. We'd all be in good shape. Blood would be flowing good. Wouldn't have time to beat yourself up. <laughs> Anyways, end of the world and depression. All the fun topics on the strange take. But uh, ultimately, I think that, uh, you know, there's just some things to keep in mind. But, uh, you know, how do we change all these things happening? Well, really, there's nothing that we can do. You can throw a nuke into Apophis and break it up and guaranteed a couple chunks will hit the planet. You know, we can all of a sudden, you know, we all quit driving gas, gas operated vehicles. But then, uh, you know, how do you get to the store? You got to walk. Well, you don't have time for that, right? You got to work. You got to be at home doing stuff, you know. That's another thing, too. I notice a lot of people, real quick, wrap up the show here. You know, a lot of people, when it's a beautiful day, they all go shopping, right? And they, they spend their whole day shopping, and then they get home, and they got, like, 40 minutes of nice weather left to do their barbecue and eat all the shit and play with all the shit. They spend all day in nice weather shopping inside of stores. So, hey, who am I to say, right? I find that a little bit strange, though. But that's me. I'd rather shop when it's shitty out. And then when it's sunny, I'm at home. I got all my junk, right? I don't go down and bug the people at the at the Costco or at the Walmart on a nice, beautiful day. And you're, you know, burying out their counters and buying up all their stuff, you know. And Jesus, and they're working their asses off. They go home, they're tired because it's a beautiful day out. So you don't want to do that to the frontline workers, right? <clears throat> but anyways, you know, keeping it real, keeping it strange. Make sure you're having a cigar at least once a day, once every two days. You know, if you drink a little whiskey, if you don't, a cup of coffee, and either way, you know, don't beat yourself up because we might all be dead from an asteroid or the, the pole switching. <laughs> Anyways, everybody, a couple things to think about for the day. Y'all take care. Uh, it's just another strange take on things. <laughs>